Well, welcome to Eastgate. I want to be, say a, a huge welcome to the Eastgate family. Hope you enjoyed the worship time this morning and we want to thank Chris Spring for bringing that to us this morning. And uh, we want to welcome we, we uh, wherever you are. I know they've probably got people from all over Kent, all over London, all over South East England, maybe. Um, I just want to move us on really to uh, some of the things that have been happening, obviously, in our nation and uh, you know, tragically in America at the moment. We're just going to take a couple of minutes to think about that and pray about that. And I know many of you have been impacted by the death of George Floyd and all the things that have followed from that. And, and as a church, we put out a statement, an email. Uh, it was called a response to racism. And I just want to underline some of the things that we put into that, that email to the members of our church. And if you'd like to see that sometime in the future, then we'll try and get that to you. But we want to, at this moment in time, want to stand in solidarity with all those who are subject to racist violence and, and oppression. Uh, all men and women are made in the image of God and uh, rightfully deserve respect and honour and love, whatever the colour of their skin. And we want to empathise with the fears that you know, our members and others have you know, around uh, you know, racist oppression and some of the fears they may have for their family and you know, raising their children you know, in this kind of atmosphere. And also, we just want to confess our neglect uh, and lack of awareness, really, and uh, lack of action over much of the institutionalized racism there is in, still in our country, uh, sometimes in our churches, uh, in our police force, our judiciary, our workplaces, and probably many other private and public uh, settings. Uh, at the bottom of uh, our letter, we made a reference to a dear friend of ours. He wrote an excellent article. Uh, he's called Yinka uh, Olikan, and he just gives on one page, just gives some real hard-hitting details of some of the impact of racism in the UK. So if you want to follow that, I recommend you do that. But also go on to YouTube. There's an amazing interview with Pastor T.D. Jakes, uh, uh, T.D. Jakes is a black pastor in America. Uh, he speaks very movingly of some of the history of black people, some of the British involvement in the crime of slave trade, trading. And uh, it's a real eye opener and a real, um, imp it will have a real impact on you in your heart and in your understanding of this issue. Uh, we'll be gathering as a church, a gathering a group of people from different cultural backgrounds just to move on because we don't want to just say nice words, but we want to take some action. We want to take this moment. As somebody has said, it's not just a moment, it should become a movement. We want to engage with that movement. And uh, we just want to explore with that group what it means to you know, build a multicultural church. We're committed to building a multicultural church and a multicultural society. Uh, we want to stand up against racism. And we want to say with many others that black lives matter. So I'm going to invite you just for a moment to, to join me in praying for ourselves and for others, you know, at this time. So, Father, we pray for wisdom and grace to pursue justice. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to bring heaven to earth. We pray that we would be able to combat racism in all its forms. And Jesus, we thank you that you are the greatest anti-racist who ever lived. So, Holy Spirit, we pray that you would transform our thinking and empower our actions in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, one of the most, uh, uh, most important and empowering things we can do to combat racism and to, you know, to live in this world is actually to have an encounter ourselves with Jesus. So I'm going to introduce you to, uh, now to two people, uh, Nathan Gilpin and uh, Val Benfield. And they've joined me for the next 20, 25 minutes. And we're just going to talk about what it means to know Jesus, uh, to encounter him and to tell others about him. This is the fifth in uh, a series of, of uh, chats that we've had uh, based on what we call the fivefold ministries, the apostles, the prophets, 
the evangelists, the pastors and the teachers. So today we're looking at the role of the evangelist and the topic of evangelism. And we hope you're going to be motivated and blessed and inspired by what we say. But to kick off, I've just asked um, Val and Nathan just to tell us basically how they became Christians. So, so Val, perhaps we can start with you. Uh, how did you first encounter Jesus? How did you become a Christian? Okay. Um, I actually just wanted to start um, with a memory that I have of the first time. Oh, hello, everyone. First of all. <laughs> um, I want to start <laughs> off with a memory that I have of, um, of God pursuing me with his love. The earliest memory I have is back in nursery school where I learned the song Amazing Grace. And I remember being fascinated at my teacher's nostrils when they flared every time she said toils and snares. <laughs> but for me, that's, that was the first <laughs> moment when after meeting Jesus, I remember God pursuing me with his love before I was even looking for him. And at the age of 21 is when I had an encounter with God that completely changed my life from now to day. And... He took away my addiction to drugs, to sex. He rescued me out of the sex industry. And I've literally been on fire and ravished by his love ever since. Yeah. That's the short version. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. And I know there's a, there's a huge story behind that. It's very, very powerful. If you ever get Val in conversation, just, just ask her, how did she become a Christian? You know, you'll be blown away. Nathan, let's, uh, so how did you first encounter Jesus? How did you become a Christian? Um, so for me, it was on a kid's weekend away when I was about four or five. Um, I never remember. Um, I remember there was a little hut just outside our accommodation. Um, we would always go there after dinner and have a worship time before we would go mess around on the mudslide or do whatever. Um, and I remember one time I was probably more excited about the mudslide than the worship time, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then... I remember just going into the worship. I can't remember the songs that were playing, but I just remember hitting the deck and that's all I remember. Um, and then I've been, I remember kind of waking up a little bit about, turns out I've been on the floor about an hour. Um, and I looked at the one Sunday school teacher was there. It was just me and her in the room. And she said, oh, did you encounter God there? I was like, um, I think so. <laughs> Obviously only being four or five. Um, and then she just took me through the steps um, of salvation and just there and then, um, it all started and just grew day to day from there. Wow. So the steps of salvation, can you kind of explain that in layman's terms? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, for me, it was uh, just that terms of, okay, I I knew who God was. I'd obviously grown up in a Christian home, had always had Sunday school, so I was aware there was this person called God. <laughs> I knew he existed, but just didn't know him for myself. So just for me, it was, okay, God exists. I know him. I know who he is. And then okay, let's learn more about him. I know about his love. I know about his presence. I know about what he does and all of that. And just learning more about him, but also learning more about myself. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, I, I know you guys well enough to know also that it's not just that you know Jesus, uh, but you love telling him, uh, telling other people about him. So uh, Val, could you give us uh, something you did recently maybe or uh, sometime in the past where you had an opportunity or took an opportunity to talk about your faith and share Jesus with somebody. Yes. Um, so for me, I don't, um, yeah, I love, I love to share Jesus all the time. And it's, um, for me, it's not about, I know from being in Christian circles for nearly 20 years now, sometimes um, people will, can stop sharing Jesus because they, they're worried that their conversion point isn't going to happen. But for me, just being able to share his love at different points is um, is really exciting. Um, and just a, earlier this week, there was somebody who had um, just made a comment on Facebook about wishing they could believe in heaven. And that really just hit me in my heart. And I just thought, oh, wow, I wonder why, I wonder why that person thinks like that or feels like that. So I I sent her a private message and um, and just asked her questions, really. And I just questioned. I said, "Oh, it's a very interesting comment that you put there on Facebook. Why, you know, why is it that you you know feel that you wish you could, but you didn't, or you know, and you don't?" And um, yeah, so after I, I pursued that conversation, she, she was quite guarded and stuff. Um, but at the end of it, we got to the fact that she was. Um, 
um, she had, had like this fearful kind of mindset about who God was. So I affirmed her and said, oh, my goodness, I also wouldn't follow God if I thought, you know, he was like that. And I can absolutely promise you he is nothing like that at all. And if you ever want to, you know, know the God I know who is full of love and grace and mercy and just totally loves you inside out for who you are, I would love to tell you more. And she ended the conversation. She didn't want to know more, but she did say, thank you for listening to me and thank you for not judging me. And I thought that was like really incredibly powerful. Um, and I, I walked away from that thinking that was a powerful encounter because, you know, James 20 says, you know, if you, um, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way saves them, saves them from a multitude yeah. um, of sins and from death. And I thought, here's this person who's been walking for whatever reason, guarded and closed to hearing about God. And here I had an opportunity to kind of just take away those rocks a little bit. And now her heart is a bit more open for the next person who comes along and speaks to her about Jesus. Cause she'll know that, you know, he's not an angry, scary God. He's actually a loving God. Yeah. Um, That's yeah. amazing. I mean, we are often unpacking people's prejudice or feelings that they have about God and trying to re reveal a God of love to them, aren't we? Yeah. That's fantastic. So Nathan, um, can you give us an example that you've had recently? Um, so for me, it was uh, chatting to an old school friend. Um, so I'm someone who really likes connection and likes keeping in touch with a lot of my friends that went to university because I uh, haven't at the time. Um, and at school, I used to often talk about I was doing evening school at the time. And often I would talk about if there's been an amazing uh, testimony to this individual. We had someone get out of a wheelchair while we were at evening school. Um, who'd been in a wheelchair for years. And funnily enough, all of us were absolutely <laughs> on top of the world about it. And I remember going in and sharing it with this individual um, and they were having difficulty believing it, but knew me and trusted the story. And it was this same individual I was catching up with um, just a, a week or two ago. So um, this, this is somebody getting healed. This is somebody getting healed and getting out of, physically getting out yes, of a wheelchair. A few years ago yeah. in evening school. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Incredible story. Um, so I shared that and then a week or two ago, um, just catching up with this individual, we're still friends, how are you doing, how's quarantine, um, how's everything that's going on with uni? Um, and they were a little bit on edge, a little bit tense, um, worrying a little bit about what their grades are going to do, because obviously every university is doing it differently, it's a bit up in the air for some universities. Um, so I just managed to share um, just about the peace of God. Um, ironically, it was the day that week I was feeling the least peaceful, <laughs> but still did have the opportunity to share the peace of God. And uh, this individual was like, you mean your God has peace as well? Um, yeah. And then kind of opened up a bit and said, oh, I only thought your God healed. I remember this story and recited to me word to word. So I know it's really been on their heart for these past few years wow. um, and said, you mean your God does peace as well as healing? Um, which to all of us thinks, oh, yeah, of course, of course. Why, why would you think anything differently? But to someone who doesn't, that's that can be equally as mind blowing. So, very briefly, took them through. Here is the God of peace. He gives us peace that is beyond all understanding. So, if we try to understand it, we don't get it. Um, and just took them along that journey of there is no situation he can't bring peace to. There's nothing that he can't settle your heart in, no matter how tense it may be. Um, and that was a really, really great conversation. Really great. That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's imagine for a moment, though, that you're the sort of person that says, uh, well, I'm not that sort of person, actually. Um, you know, evangelism isn't for me. This is a, somebody who believes in Jesus and has encountered Jesus themselves. But they kind of struggle with this whole thing of, you know, telling others. It seems to have so many pitfalls for them and so many problems. So... You know, if somebody comes to you and says, I'm just not that sort of person, Nathan, Val, um, kind of what would you say to somebody like that? Val, let's, let's start with you. Okay. I'm just going to pick up something quickly. <laughs> I have here some plants before I go into my story. Um, here are some sunflowers, some snapdragons and marigolds and some flowers I can't pronounce. Okay. They were all planted at exactly the same time um, within these. And as you can see, they are all growing really differently. And as I shared my testimony, 
the first seed I remember going into my life, learning about God's goodness, was learning that song, Amazing Grace. Now, I don't have time to go through all the others up until I met him at the age of 21. But that seed, that first seed is so powerful. I mean, I'm going to be 40 next year, and I remember it like it was yesterday. So I would like to say to each person who um, is not sure about how to share the love of God, I'm going to say, just be you, because you don't know how that seed is going to grow, when it's going to grow but it will grow. I mean, as you can see, these sunflowers are at growing at a rate of knots compared to these little snapdragons over here. It's really tiny. And I just want to encourage you that everybody is on a journey, everybody. And each person you encounter has at some point along the line been spoken to about God or God has spoken directly to them. And when you come into that person's presence, you are either going to be watering or you are going to be sowing more seed into their lives so that there can be a, a beautiful demonstration of fruit of them demonstrating who God is in them. And that takes time. So, so yeah, nice. I would just say, yeah, be encouraged in watering. And also prayer, like prayer is so powerful. Like we have the son, Jesus, who lives to intercede for us all the time. Um, intercede for the person who we want to speak to and intercede for us so that we can speak. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and our prayer is matched with Jesus, you know. It's just, yeah, it's awesome. So That's, that's fantastic. And, and is that little seed growing exercise, is that, is that a result of the lockdown? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? I never knew I had green fingers. Today. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew I had green fingers. I now have strawberries. That's a Thank beautiful you. illustration. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Beautiful illustration, Bell. Oh, thank you. So, Nathan, how, how about you? What would you say to somebody who was saying, I'm just not that kind of person? Um, I think for me, I think it's similar to Val. Um, just on along the lines of you being you um, is evangelistic, uh, which can seem a bit of a contrary statement. Um, but just on the fact that we obviously as Christians, uh, we believe um, that God lives in us um, and we Holy Spirit is in us and we believe that Holy Spirit is equal to God. Um, so whenever I'm just walking around, not necessarily even doing organized evangelism, it's thinking, OK, I have the King of Kings who created the heavens and the earth inside me. Mm. Just as I'm walking down the street, <laughs> that can spark off many, many different thoughts in your head. Um, but just the fact that we can often think, oh, I can be loving because I've got God inside me. That's something we can all think about. That's something we probably all think is one of the easier things to do. Um, and obviously, maybe a little bit harder to say, oh, you can share God because God is in you. Um, but just that thing of I believe that being evangelistic is kind of part of our spiritual DNA. And it's part of how God has just designed us. Um, and Jesus is our prime model. And he worked in all three of these five gifts that we've talked about the past five weeks. Um, but you being you can be evangelistic, however form that takes, however shape that takes. It's going to be different for every single one of us. But you being you can be evangelistic. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's great advice, isn't it? And um, so, so if I'm the kind of person that says, OK, I, I love Jesus. And do you know what? You, you've really convinced me this morning that. You know, I want to do more of this stuff, really. Uh, what would you say to somebody who said, like, I'm really, really, I'm raring to go. Um, is there something I can do? Is there some training for me? What is, what's my next step, apart from just kind of finding people? Uh, but, Val, do you want to start start off with that? Yeah, cool. Um, well, one, um, one of the ways, there's um, Alpha at church. You can get involved um, and being a part of Alpha. That's really awesome group to learn how to share your faith um, and just to be alongside people who are searching as well. Um, you know, being active in, our, in sharing our faith helps us to grow and deepen our knowledge of God as well. So doing that, uh, the Dazzle course that um, Fiona and Mark, um, Nathan's parents do, uh, I highly recommend doing that. Um, I haven't done it, but I know Mark and Fiona and I know their hearts and I know their love and passion to equip and empower people to share their faith according to their unique fingerprint. So, um, so yeah, I'd say definitely do that. Um, and then there's also, there's another, there's so many projects you can get involved in. There's um, 
There's also the homeless shelter um, as well, um, food banks. There's so many different ways and expressions to be able to share your faith. There's also Emerge Advocacy. If you want to get involved, they're busy doing training at the moment right now, so that's hot off the press. Um, if you'd like to get involved and share your faith with um, young teenagers in crisis. Um, and then also just um, pray and ask God to give you opportunities. You know, you have your neighbors next door, you have your family members, and God has a message of love for each and every person you come into contact with. So, and he's faithful. He'll open up those opportunities for you and he'll give you the words to speak. And um, don't let fear get in the way. You know, um, don't let yeah. fear get in the way. I, I specifically sat on this chair today because as you can see, it looks almost like a throne. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I just wanted to say, if you can imagine with me right now, you sitting on your throne, next to the right hand of Jesus and knowing that that's where you are and seated in heavenly places and a fear comes towards you before any, any moment or opportunity that you have, just imagine yourself sitting in this chair, see fear and go <clears throat> and just scoot them out the way. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> okay that, that's a, another great illustration Val um, Nathan anything else you want to add to that yeah I think all of those are absolutely brilliant um, I completely agree and I think something which uh, was a personal focus for me um, which was a question God kind of provoked in me was how full of me are you because um, often it can be the, uh, the question of oh let's go do evangelism let's go and do it and then you just go and do it and you don't always think about God <laughs> when you go and do organized evangelism um, but just for me, it's that question of, am I so full of God that I'm overflowing? Am I so full of God that my overflow is also affecting all those around me? Because again, just linking back to what I said earlier, we have a heavenly father in us who created everything, who can do anything. If we are so full of his love, so full of his passion, so full of his grace for everyone around us, just walking down the streets, how many people are we impacting? Obviously, there's incredible stories of people shadow healing people um, and all of that. And it's like, if I'm at a place where I can walk down the street and see someone healed, that's something to aim for. That's incredible. That means I am so overflowing that without even thinking, God is healing people around me. And it's just that question that really still just burns on my heart is that how full of God are you? Just to be provoking. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, well, we've got about five minutes to go. Um, Val mentioned the Alpha course. She mentioned uh, the Dazzle course. Dazzle stands for Developing a Supernatural Evangelistic Lifestyle, uh, hence, hence the interesting title. Uh, and you can find out more details about that on uh, the Eastgate website, the Church Online. Go, go on the Eastgate website and click on Church Online. You'll find all those kind of details there. Um, I've got a, I asked Mark and Fiona Gilpin, who run our Dazzle course, our evangelism training course, just to give us a couple of quotes of people who are, have been on it or on it or are actually on it at the moment. I believe we've actually got about 25 people doing the course online, you know, as, as we speak. And here's a couple of quotations um, from people on the course. Here's the first one. I'm learning to introduce uh, Jesus to people around me and understanding that God sets me up for evangelistic success. Uh, another one, Dazzle changed the way we as a family live and love. We are praying for people wherever we go, seeing miracles happen and people touched by the love of God. And uh, it would be great if we could just replicate that. I just want to take the opportunity of recommending Mark and Fiona's book, uh, God's Dream. Um, that's God's dream to bring everybody into, you know, his kingdom. And you can find out more details on, on, on their website. That's www.godstream.info. Um, so, um, okay, just, just one more thing to ask you guys uh, before we kind of wrap up. If you had to uh, kind of try and sum up, you know, the, the message about Jesus, you know, what we call the good news, the word evangelism or evangelism, is taken from a Greek word, evangel, just means good news, doesn't it? Uh, just in a sentence, what is the good news about Jesus? And uh, Val, can we have your contribution first? <laughs> um, so 
the scripture that I really um, have imprinted into my mind uh, with every human being that I look at um, is Revelation 3 verse 20, where it says, Behold, here I am, I stand at the door and I knock. Whoever invites me in, I will come and make my home with him. And to me, that's just one of the reasons why for me, I can't hold myself back from getting involved in so many things, being able to speak to so many different people in different circumstances. Because to me, God's already there. Jesus is already knocking at the door. Um, yeah, because and he's waiting with arms wide open just to pour his love onto That's you. That's great. Thank yeah. you. And Nathan, how about you? Um, yeah, so for me, um, my verse um, was Galatians 5 verse 1. Um, and that verse says, uh, so Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in the slavery to law. Um, and for me, one of the biggest hearts of the gospel along so many others that I love is that you're free from, but you're also free to be. Um, and again, ties into uh, Chris Springs worship this morning, um, someone on the live chat, um, I can't remember who said it, so I apologize, <laughs> said, um, uh, God, set us free for the sake of freedom and that instantly just struck me that it's like he set us free just for the sake of freedom as well as he loves us as well as he wants the best for us as well as absolutely everything else um and that it just is always on my heart that you're free from all that baggage you're free from all that bad stuff bow i know your story and i know it's incredible and i know all the stuff you have been set free from and that everything you've been free to be all you've done is absolutely incredible and i think you're a prime example of that that we are free from everything that is negative but we're free to be free and we're free to do everything we can and everything we want to and just so 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 much more that's great that's fantastic thank you guys uh, if you pull those two comments together you're really you know we're seeing jesus standing outside you know of our lives waiting to come in if we don't know him and he wants to set us free and, and i'm just going to add to that by reading um from one corinthians uh when somebody asked paul the apostle uh, you know, what the good news was, he replied with these words, which should be appearing before you now. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. But what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, uh, that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and to the twelve. And after that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James and then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also as one abnormally born. And, you know, at the heart of the gospel message the good news about Jesus is his death and resurrection. You know, Jesus has died for you uh, so that he you know, bearing your sins so that your sins can be forgiven so that you could come back into this amazing love relationship. You know, that's how the door gets open that Val was talking about. You, are, you know, you, the door's open be, and can be open because Jesus died. It can be open because Jesus rose from the dead. He's alive today. And he's overcome sin and evil in our lives. And I just want to invite you, if you're, if you're out there and don't know Jesus, to kind of just think about those things and uh, consider whether this is the moment really in your life, uh, you know, a moment to start a movement, if you like, a moment in your life where, you know, it's time for you to respond to the love of God and the love of Jesus. And we'd love to be able to help you with that process. Do, you know, email in and contact us. And we'd love to be able to share a bit more of the good news or go on to our website, find out about the Alpha course. Uh, you know, it'd be a great help. So many people in our nation, there are 7,000 churches of all denominations who run the Alpha course in the UK alone, and well over 30 or 40,000 in, in the world, you know, worldwide. So we really encourage you to do that. Um, I'm just going to close this morning uh, with a prayer. Um, it's going to appear on your screen now, and it's just a prayer for us to kind of engage in the whole evangelism, you know, evangelistic process, if you like. So just pray this with me. Father, 
Thank you for saving me and adopting me into your family. Thank you for all that you've done in my life. Thank you for wanting to involve me in introducing people to you. Thank you for inviting me to take part in the fulfillment of your dream. I accept your great invitation and ask you to free me from any struggles I have with evangelism. Help me to see evangelism as you see it. Teach me to hear your voice in evangelistic moments and give me the courage to respond. Help me to love people with your love and to see them as you see them. Please empower me with your spirit so that unbelievers will encounter you and your kingdom realm. Lead me into many evangelistic adventures and let them begin today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now, I have to confess, I pinched that prayer from the back of Mark and Fiona's book, uh, God's Dream, so that, that's where you'll find that. Um, but our time is up now, so I want to say a great thank you to, to Val and to Nathan for joining us this morning and you know, helping us explore this whole topic. I uh, just have a couple of notices for our church family, just to remind people that there's no youth meeting this morning. And once again, to you know, if you want to find out anything more about our church, uh, the Alpha course, or any support we can give you uh, online in a pastoral way or in any other way, then just go onto our website and you'll find the details for that. So I want to bless you and say have a, a great rest of the weekend and look forward to joining with you during the week or maybe next Sunday as well. So it's kind of bye from me and, and Val and Nathan. God bless you and goodbye. Thank you.